What are some of the new innovative public safety capabilities that exist today with the new smart robots that no- Nightscope has? Well, thanks for uh, thanks for having us and greetings from uh, Silicon Valley. Um, so be. Nightscope, we're on a, on a crazy mission to see if we can make the United States of America the safest country in the world. Um, so for the last nearly decade, we've been building a bunch of crazy technologies, four really difficult to- technologies combined into one. Uh, autonomous self-driving technology, robotics, AI, and electric vehicles. Each of those are really hard unto themselves. So we thought to make it a little bit harder, we combine them all into one autonomous security robot. Um, We are now uh, patrolling across the country from Hawaii to North Carolina. Uh, We've done probably 1.8 million hours of operation out in the field. And if you think, you know, we work for Big Brother and the machines are coming to kill everyone and take everyone's job, uh, that is not the case. Just go to nightscope.com slash crime, and you can see all the awesome crime fighting wins that these uh, machines have already uh, delivered for a positive impact on society. The, the question of, you know, of safety, you know, and part of that has to do with mediating threat. I mean, all of it has to do with mediating threat. Does the robot, do your robots just rely on physical presence or are there protocols in place, structures in place where, you know, they could actually, I mean, go from just kind of frightening somebody to literally arresting somebody? This is software plus hardware plus humans is the most effective. So you want the robots to do the monotonous, computationally heavy (laughs) stuff Mm -hmm. and let the humans do the enforcement and decision making. Okay. So let me tell you what we plan to do and then kind of what happens today. So what we plan to do is criminals and terrorists can be anywhere. So Nightscope needs to be everywhere. So you'll see a massive portfolio of different products of all shapes and sizes uh, from something really tiny that's maybe incognito mode in a US federal courthouse underneath a bench to something patrolling a city and and a highway and everything in between. And then we're gonna make these machines be able to see, feel, hear, and smell and do a hundred times more than a human could ever do. And that gives the officers and guards eyes, ears, and voice on the ground in multiple locations at the same time. What what happens today? Well, these machines generate over 90 terabytes of data a year. No human's gonna be able to process that. So we put that in a usable format that the clients can use, uh, um, just log into the application and you've got access to the machines. So they can detect a person, Uh, They can detect the person. They can run a thermal scan of the environment. They can read several hundred license plates a minute. Uh, They can treat your mobile device as if it's a license plate. Um, So let's say you you expelled a student last week or you fired someone from your corporation and you're worried that person is going to come back. Or actually this happened, domestic uh, uh, abuse case, it turns into workplace violence. Um, So you can put the, you know, BOLO or watch list Profile pick of the person, all the mobile devices attached to that person, uh, and the license plate. And then the machines are literally on the lookout uh, with a perfect memory uh, to alert the, the officers and guards to, to take action uh, when needed. Um, so, the, the, you know, if you're able to do that 24 7, 365, that gives you a whole other level of capability that we almost call superhuman capabilities at the officer's uh, fingertips.